Hey guys, Dr. Greg here. I just finished up an amazing conversation with Marin, one of our nurses and health coaches here at Vitae Functional Medicine. We talked all about gratitude, from the practice of it, to the neuroscience of it, to how it can affect those neurotransmitters that have a huge impact upon your life. So get a notepad, get a pencil, uh, get some sticky notes, because we're gonna talk about how to use sticky notes, and, and stay tuned, we have some amazing information coming your way. Hey guys, Dr. Greg here, and on today's episode of The Daily Dose with Dr. Greg, we have one of our own joining me in the studio here at the Vitae Functional Medicine Clinic in Burnsville. We have Marin, who is actually one of our, one of our coaches. Marin is an RN and has been for over 20 years. She um, is a runner, she's a mom, and, and months ago now, I was like, hey, you guys need to be on the podcast. What are you gonna talk about? And Marin's like, gratitude, just like that. <laughs> so Marin, good to have you here. Thank you for having me, so, appreciate it. Um, so gratitude, like why was it for you that that just came to your mind like immediately? What was it for you that said, okay, we gotta talk about gratitude? So when I learned about the power of gratitude, it had an enormous shift in my life. Okay. And it makes such a big difference when you come from a place where you're changing your health um, and your mindset. Mm -hmm. And so gratitude is just a big part of all of that. Right. Now you have a master's degree I do. in health coaching. Yep. And, and for those that maybe don't know what health coaching is, like our clinic, we take a very like what I call a two pronged approach. Like we're, we're very clinical, which means like take this vitamin, stop eating this, cut that one in half. And then I tell, tell, tell people the other like the two pronged approach is the mindset, the, the, the mindfulness, the gratitude. And sometimes I tell people we have to keep you out of your own way of getting well. And gratitude is a huge part of that equation. So for you, if you were, if someone was to say, what is gratitude? How would you define that? So there are numerous thoughts on that. For some, it's just a feeling of, oh yeah, thanks for having me here. Mm -hmm. And then it can be a mood yeah. and in my life, gratitude is a practice. Ooh. It is a skill okay. and a habit that I try to do every day. And try is the operative word here sure, because sure. we go for progress, not perfection. Yeah, that's one of your that's one of your <laughs> mottos, right? Progress, yes. not perfection. And yes. if you're listening to this right now, people need to get this, right? Many people are stumped by perfection. And what they learn is if it's not perfect, it's all bad. Yeah. If you're not for me, you're against me. Yeah. If it's not exactly how I want it, the whole thing's a disaster. Yeah. And gratitude says, wait, 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 wait. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Like, what about the chaos is okay? What about that relationship is actually good? What about this situation could actually be a good thing, right? Yeah. And you said it's a practice. Yes. Um, and you have to, you have to like, like, cue yourself to be aware of it. And you have to be like, okay, I'm going to look for what's right. And I say, I like that you say it's a practice because I believe, and if you're listening to this right now, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm this way as well. Like, I don't think we have to train ourselves to find the things that are maybe not right in a situation mm -hmm. or something that we don't care for yet to take it and to, and to have the practice of gratitude, to schedule it in. I actually wrote in my journal for years, I am overwhelmed by gratitude at least twice a day. So for you, it's looking at that situation and going, oh my gosh, that's amazing from that standpoint. Yeah. So it's it's really finding that deep appreciation for life situation that you find yourself right. in and for the people in your life and the things that everybody takes for granted, right? Waking up in the morning, here's another day. Right. Let's be grateful for that. So true. As opposed to, I'm tired I wish I could stay in bed. I didn't sleep good. Mm -hmm. And would you agree that gratitude begets gratitude, right? It snowballs. It does. So, it's a magnifier. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that is so good. So I don't necessarily think that we're all wired this way. There are some people that, like, they just effervesce gratitude. We, we probably know that person. Mm -hmm. um, so for you, how did you begin to cultivate that practice and, and what did that look like for you in your own world to start to use that, that tool of gratitude? So I was in a pretty stressful season of my life. 
Um, I was an ER nurse for a long time. Mm. No and stress in the emergency department. No, no, no. <laughs> and a friend of mine alerted me to a podcast, essentially, that was coming up. Um, every year in November, I listened to it. Mm -hmm. That it, 2016 was the first year. Okay. And it's called the Gratitude and Generosity Series. And gratitude and generosity are, are sisters, right? They go hand in hand. Okay. And so weekly episodes, four weeks, and it just, the things that were talked about absolutely changed my life. Wow. So help, help the listeners understand, like, so... You shifted from what to what, like from what to generous or what to gratitude. Like what, what small shifts did you see in your own being in that shift? So just being able to take a busy day in the ER mm -hmm. and turn it around and say, okay, I have seen 20 patients today. Right. And they're all there because they're sick or injured totally. or not feeling well. And here I am, I get to be a part of their lives, right? I get to see them in the most vulnerable moment. Yeah. And to just appreciate that versus, yeah, I've had another bad day at work. <laughs> well, and you saw people on the worst day of their life, literally, right? They're at the ER. They're, they're in an emergency. You are there to do a job, right? You're, you're, you're working for big business and you're and you're you've you're you you have you're assigned a task and you're supposed to take care of that person and I think gratitude if I hear you correctly is to peel yourself away from the doingness mm -hmm. of the girl in the scrubs and administering and, and helping and saying, holy crap, I am here serving these people. Yeah. How lucky am I mm -hmm. to be here right now knowing that I have the skill set to help that man or that woman or that child get through their thing. Mm -hmm. Which is a shift from holy crap, this is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I have too many patients, not enough time, not enough resources, and I'm supposed to do my best. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. That's a shift. A huge shift. Man, I love that you use the word generosity with gratitude. Um, a lot of people, I think some people are, are, are genetically generous. Like they just mm -hmm. are giving. Um, and I think, I actually think that most of us are in our in our very basis and then i think the world takes it from us right because this world says like what's in it for me mm -hmm. not how can i give and how can i how can i give of what i have to you but it's like what's in it for me yeah so that conversation of generosity and and when people think being generous they think like you're supposed to stroke a check someplace right right so for you when you so you've talked about the concept of of gratitude so when you think of being um generous how have you how have you processed the word generous in your world and how, how has that fleshed itself out well so with with gratitude like i said is a great multiplier mm -hmm. so what you have in your life really becomes totally more than enough mm -hmm. right so you turn a house into a home, you turn a meal into a feast Yeah. when you look at it from a gratitude perspective. Right. And the more you have in your life that you're grateful for, the more you will find in your life to be grateful for. And that puts you in that giving spirit, right? right? More, Whether that more is than enough. Time, mm -hmm. presence, right. kind words. Totally. Kindness really towards other people. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Marin, I heard a, yeah. I, I heard a term yesterday when I was doing some of my quiet time, and it said this. It said, "It said life is short, eternity is forever, and people matter the most." Yeah. And I was like, man, that really struck me, because like gratitude, once you snowball gratitude and it magnifies, then you get to look at situations upon situations, and you get to because you bend an ear, you get a bent to say. What am I grateful for in the situation, right? I mean, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now. And we could look at it and go, it's all bad. Yeah. Yet the reality is when you have an ear bent towards gratitude, you can fillet through the chaos and pick the things up. And generosity is no different. Mm -hmm. Some of the happiest people that I know are the most generous people. Mm -hmm. 
And it doesn't mean that they're loaded and stroke big checks to people, but like you said, they're generous with their time, they're generous with their talent, they're generous with just even giving words. Mm -hmm. For example, I was at the UPS store yesterday, which everyone loves going to the UPS store. And there's a woman there that's always smiling and she's always nice. And I have learned in my world that if I feel prompted to compliment somebody, shame on me for not following through. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, you know what? I really appreciate that when I come here, you're always happy and you always have a smile on your face. And, and, I, and I, I'm grateful for this because before I got out the door, she looked at her coworkers and she said, aww, like it struck her, yeah. right? It struck her. So I had the prompting to compliment. Yeah. And who doesn't like to receive compliments, yeah. right? She didn't, she didn't, I wasn't walking out. She's like, oh my gosh, that guy's crazy. Mm -hmm. Because it was, it was from a place of, of just authentic, mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. So there's some science in gratitude too, isn't there? There is. So what'd you find when you did some research behind the science? Yeah. So um, gratitude can affect your physical health and your mental health. Okay. Uh, people who practice gratitude regularly, they see less depression, Whoa. less anxiety. I've heard someone say that depression and gratitude cannot live in the same house at the same time. Yeah. Gratitude and negativity do not go together. Yeah, they don't. They, they don't, don't, they don't coexist. Uh -uh. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Gratitude releases serotonin and dopamine, which are the feel-good chemicals in your brain. We like those. And we actually see neural pathways strengthened okay. and built when we practice gratitude. Holy crap. That's clutch. Yeah. So literally changing neurobiochemistry yes. by a thought. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? A practice. A practice. Um, and the, the cool thing is, and practice over time equals stronger neural pathways. Mm -hmm. So I completely love that. Um, all right, so people are listening to this and they're like, well, this sounds great, mm -hmm. yet um, maybe I'm not like Mr. or Ms. Gratitude in my world. Like how does someone, like for example, like share your practice? Like what does that look like for you so that someone listening to this could have an idea of what does it look like to be in a state of gratitude practice? Yeah, so um, I... Use a gratitude journal. Okay. So at the end of the day, most days, I just take a few minutes and reflect back on my day and really find the positive. And some days are e easier than others. Amen to that one. But it is the difficult days where you really have to dig deep. Right. Where you find the most. Okay. In your day. Okay. And where, you're, where, you, where gratitude matters the most. Is when it's not obvious. When it's not obvious. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I, um, I, one of my business co coaches is named uh, Dan Sullivan. And Dan Sullivan has an app that I use, much similar to you. And every day it says, what were your wins today? Which is what, what you're grateful for. And, um, and I agree. It's those days that you're like, I'm not grateful for anything. And the app is, like, is kind of like, well, I don't care. What are three things? Mm -hmm. And and I think it's good for us to even, and I would say I'm probably more of a positive-based person, to get out of that rut and to understand and to do those things. Then the app that I use, by the way, for your listeners, um, I have no ties to Dan Sullivan, but he has an app called Winstreak, W-I-N-S-T-R-E-A-K. It's an app. We'll put it in the show notes. So I have it cue me at 7 o'clock because I go to bed early every night um, to say, what are you grateful for today? And then it says, what are the three things that would make tomorrow awesome? So we also know that if you if you forecast the next day, mm -hmm. your body will conspire to make it happen for you. Whoa, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So I really like having the ability to, and, and I'll be honest, there are days where I kind of am, man, I'll just put stuff in. But so doing it's one thing, but like, okay, like really being present and and looking like, okay, what is my tomorrow? What do I have going on? What would truly make tomorrow amazing? Mm -hmm. is is such a, a neat practice to go from that standpoint. Um, how do you use it kind of, so you, so you have a, a, a gratitude journal where you, mm -hmm. and by the way, the science on writing things down is really solid. So mm -hmm. to actually like, mm -hmm. oh, so for those that don't listen, so there's this uh, technology called a pen and a paper where you can actually <laughs> like write things down. Uh, it's clutch though, because it actually goes to a different spot in your brain than yeah. maybe typing it in your phone. Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of writing it down. Um, there's, there's, uh, there's several gratitude journal options that are out there. And again, it should cost nothing. Right. But on the fly, like, 
let's say someone's got a stressful day at work or they've got a, I don't know, a stressful relationship or, or they have a sick person in their family. Like, how would you coach someone how to like cue up gratitude? Like, how would you, how would you encourage them to be like, oh yeah, that's right. I have that one tool in my toolbox that works pretty good. How would you coach a person through that if they had that going on in their life? Well, for one, reflection is big, Mm -hmm. right? What did your day look like? Right. What did you learn from your day? Sure. And where can you find appreciation inside of those learnings? Yeah. I think for me too, what I hear you say is slow down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes we are so busy being human doings that we forget that we're human beings, Mm -hmm. right? So I've learned... Uh, I'm a go-getter. I, I I move fast. And what I learn is when I have the ability to slow down, even inside of a situation, and be like, you know, um, do you remember the, one of the coaching, the trainings that we had with with Coach Pete? Remember he said there's three things you can tr- control in your life? Mm-hmm. Remember he said you can control your thoughts, mm-hmm. your words, and what you imagine. That's just three things. Mm-hmm. And then we look at what we're trying to control in our life, and many times it's a lot more yeah. Than those three things. Yeah. And I'm grateful that I have control. I have control over my thoughts, my words, and what I imagine. And then I also love the fact that I can remind myself that there's a lot of things that I don't have control over. Now, I'm a controller. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to control those other things. But the reality, I mean, heck, we had some technical difficulties getting started today. Yep. You know what? I, it could frustrate me or I could be here like, you know what? I can sit and be still and be quiet and I'm good. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important for us to slow down a little bit and just look around. One of the things that Dan Sullivan also talks about, um, and I think this is a gratitude thing, is the ability to look where you are. Many times people are discontent where they are. Mm-hmm. And, and whether that's with your health. I mean, we deal with a lot of really tough health situations in you our do. chronic, my goodness, chronic Lyme disease and multiple autoimmune diseases mm-hmm. and chronic fatigue. And I mean, we, the tough of the tough seem to find us. I'm not sure mm-hmm. how they do that, um, but we're grateful. Yes. Because we have the tools, right? Yes. Um, so I think it's important for us to slow down inside of what we're going through and what we're experiencing mm-hmm. and go, okay, there is good inside of this. And, and Dan Sullivan talks about in his book, The Gap and the Gain, he talks about the ability to look backwards and go, I'm not where I think I want to be, but I'm not where I was. Mm-hmm. And that's gratitude. Yeah. Right? That's the acknowledgement of, of um, like I even look at, you know, I look at um, relationships, for example. Like, I have certain relationships in my life that are not where I think they should be, but yet there are so many things that are good mm-hmm. with them. And I'll be honest with you guys. I'm a pretty positive guy, but I will catch myself going down negative Nally Alley. <laughs> I think we should term that sucker, negative Nally Alley. You should. I like that. <laughs> um, when in reality, there's so many things that are good inside mm-hmm. of those aspects. So I think that's important for us. So... Um, We've talked a lot about why this is important. Um, How do you keep a finger on the tab of your clients to know that they're doing this? Like, what does that look like as a clinician that does health coaching, that knows that it's not just take this vitamin, don't take that vitamin? How are you like, hey, Susie, or whatever your client's name might be, how, how is this going? So what have you found is kind of your just little way to lovingly say, how's your gratitude practice? What does that look like? What would that? What would a question that you might be that might you might ask? Well, one of the friends? things I try to ask is, tell me something that good that happened since you and I last. Isn't time. that fun? We start the question like that. Or, tell me the best thing from your day. What made you smile today? I love that, Marin, because people come into a, a, a visit with their doctor or their nurse, and they're ready to have like, here's what's wrong, here's what's wrong, here's what's wrong, mm-hmm. and then we're like, what's right, and they're like, oh. Damn it. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. So, but isn't it interesting how how this world has conditioned patients and clients to have their litany of what's wrong uh-huh. as opposed to what's going well. So then you pull that on them a few times and they're like, "Oh yeah, I have to have my I have to have my list of good things ready to go." Yes. And and what happens is it changes their physiology, uh-huh. right? You talked about mm-hmm. serotonin and dopamine and then you start to carve those neural pathways and then because they know that you're going to ask them about that, they're looking for it. Oh, that's clutch. I love it. Gratitude is one of those things that I was never taught it necessarily. Like I don't remember a class. I mean, I have 
you, we have psychology classes and mm-hmm. sociology classes. Mm-hmm. I just think that this world like ill equips us in a yeah. lot of cases. Um, you know, I, I remember growing up with our kids, like we would actually teach, we would train our kids, um, like tell me three things that are going good. We actually used to do this thing in our, and we should, by the way, if my wife listens to this, we should do this again. We would actually go around at night and, and compliment each other. Much like that lady at the UPS store. Like mm-hmm. she was like, oh, so I think one thing that I, that I think I like about the, the conversation of gratitude is say something nice to somebody. Yes. Right. And, and that can be a practice of gratitude is take a note card, send a text, right? Just appreciate another so person and make it so that it comes out of the clear blue. Right. When's the last time that you wrote a letter to somebody or a note card and you sent it to them telling, you, telling them that you appreciate them? Right. Who wouldn't get that and be like, Aww. <laughs> right. Um, and, and two, I think it's it's important that um, we also can receive those things mm-hmm. because sometimes someone will say something nice to us, and we're like, meh, or we don't receive it, or we, uh, or we. Um, and by the way, so if someone says something to you, compliments you, this is I'm going to coach here for a second, okay? So if I said to you, hey, those are great shoes, Marin. And if you said something like, oh, these cheap things, I got these on sale. That is actually not receiving a no. compliment. That's actually an egotistical response. Mm-hmm. Now, no one likes to hear that. And and like, so if I said if I said to you, hey, that beautiful shirt, you'd be like, oh, this thing, well, I got it at Marshall's. That's actually not receiving a compliment. So I think a lot of us don't know how to receive compliments. Mm-hmm. Or we're told if, or we're told if you receive a compliment, you're like, pompous or arrogant so i could say marion those are really cool shoes then you could say something like why thank you i like them also yeah that's very different than like oh these things Mm -hmm. got them on sale Mm -hmm. i think i don't think we're i don't think many of us are trained to receive compliments yeah it can be tough (laughs) right well here's the scoop um i've said to my patients thousands of times in my 20 years of being a doc I've said to them something like this. If you would say to me what I say to myself, I may not like you very much. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't speaking life and love into yourself, then when someone else tries to, you're like, ah, awkward. Like, I don't know what to do with that. So I think also a a practice of gratitude is not just looking around at your day and saying, oh, that's a cool camera or those are cool shoes or I love the fact that we could be in a studio and shoot something like this. It's to find other things and be the tide that raises the ships. Like, and, and who doesn't like a true compliment? That's authentic. Yes. Right? Because we've all received kind of the weird ones where you're like, mm, I don't know what I think about that. I'm probably going to call BS on that one, right? And yet, um, I think it's important for us to, I, I know for me, like, I, I, like when I feel this urge or this prompting to compliment like for me that's just like like just do it Mm -hmm. it's there do it Mm -hmm. and like for example i had a patient um yesterday this girl she's from she's from um sarajevo and she had these beautiful purple shoes on i walked in and i was like i love your shoes and she's like thank you and it's just a different conversation right Mm -hmm. so i think it's important for us to to be aware of those and to be on the lookout and having those aspects from that standpoint. So I love this. So, okay, people are listening to this podcast. They're like, okay, this all sounds great. Those guys are probably like smoking something today because they seem all airy-fairy and life is good. By the way, we're not. Um, But this is a practice. It is. So if someone's never even dreamt of this or never even started this once in their life and they're like, okay, you have my attention. But I'm not about to belly flop in the deep end of this thing called gratitude. If you were to coach someone about just dip a toe, what would be the simplest thing that they could do that they could gain some success, get some momentum, and then parlay it forward? How would you coach someone on that? I'm big on sticky notes. Any one of my clients will attest to that. Mm -hmm. Um, So take a sticky note at the end of the day and just start by writing three things from your day that you can find appreciation in. Okay. Where do you put it? On your bathroom mirror. On your bathroom mirror. (laughs) That's so good. So that in the morning you see it 
And every time you go to the bathroom, you see it and yeah. it reminds you, okay, there's right. my gratitude. And then at the end of the next day, repeat. And then the next day, repeat. Right. And then before you know it, you're going to grab a notebook because those sticky notes are going to fill up your bathroom mirror. And then you don't have take a them down. notebook. Don't no, take them don't down. Take leave, them. leave a spot for your face. You yeah. can brush your face and put your makeup on. Yeah. yeah. That's clutch. So post-it notes, yeah. cheapies, a good yes. pen, Yes. And, and write things. Or even just a simple notebook yeah. will do. Right. Right? Bullet points. It doesn't have to be a novel. Progress, not, not perfection. Perfect, perfection, right? Yes. And I think so many people get caught up on starting something because it's not perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it right. And I want to say, like, shut up. You got to start someplace. Like, one thing. Well, and what does right look like, right? Ooh. Ooh. It, I mean, it. yeah, just list three items. And don't be like my kids when I tried to do gratitude with my kids a few years back where they were much younger than they are now. They gave me the same list every day. Right. That's Find so something different. That's so good. Right. That's crazy. Um. I have two little girls. My wife and I have five kids. I have two little girls. And I will, um, I'll put compliments on sticky notes and I'll put them on their mirror. And um, if I skip, it will be requested that daddy puts sticky notes on the mirror. And I love that many times little kids have the audacity, the authenticness, the rawness to say, I matter Mm -hmm. and I need that. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Yeah. I'll also say this, that people that are listening to this have people in their life that won't ask for it, that but they need it, do it for them anyway. And by the way, the person that probably needs it the most is you. Mm -hmm. So even dare I say you write something that is awesome about yourself. Yeah. I mean, if you can't compliment you, how can you compliment somebody else? If you're not a person that can receive compliments, Got to start on the home front. And and this is, I truly believe that this is why we get the results we do clinically. I tell patients, by the way, the only way out is through. Mm-hmm. And and if you if we can't even get to this point, I'll guarantee you, ain't no vitamin, ain't no mm-hmm. coffee enema or nebulizer treatment that's going to get through these things. Yet you have seen miracles. I have. Where people, and it's not because there was a missing vitamin. No. <laughs> Mm-mm. Right. No, it all comes back down to mindset. Right. And appreciation. And even finding appreciation in trauma, which we see quite a bit Ooh, of. Ooh, there's a tough one, right? Because at the end of the day, it teaches us something. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's that big shift. I, I tell people, by the way, I don't con- condone physical trauma or sexual trauma or any abuse. I would never say it was good for you. No. Yet, if it's happened to you, there's an opportunity to say you're you're in one of two places. Either it's happened to you, which makes you a victim, Mm -hmm. or it's happened for you, Mm -hmm. which allows you to say it's part of my past. It's Mm -hmm. part of what I've experienced. And either I can leave it on the trailer behind me and I can continue to pull it behind me, my life, or I can say, you know what? I've learned some things from that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, And you know what? I'm ready to unhook yeah but a lot of people don't unhook Mm -hmm. because it's all they know yeah i had a i had a patient yesterday actually that said how come at work and she's a she's a nurse i can just i am like steady eddie i'm just like boom 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 we're good and then i get home and i am nervous nelly and it's chaos and i was like well that's because that's the house that you grew up in Mm -hmm. it's what you knew is chaos Mm -hmm. so you don't even know what a house looks like that's normal and she looked at me for like 30 seconds like oh my gosh and then we asked that question of even predisposing evan you know like when did this happen and we allow people to like look at your life and like what what happened um she had a brother that was killed when she was nine Mm. i wouldn't wish that upon anybody and and prior to that she said this to me this broke my heart um she was the first girl after like six boys and she's like and she's like i was my daddy's little girl I was like, oh, hell yeah, totally. And my dad, she said, my dad hugged me so like hard one time that he actually broke my collarbone. And he said, and her dad would say to her, to my defense, you had a cracked collarbone before that. But, but he would just 
squeezed her. And, and what she said to me yesterday was, my dad never hugged me after my brother died. Wow. Right? Wow. Because dad didn't know how to process grief. Yeah. His son was just killed. Yeah. So that trickle down component. Yeah. So I looked this woman straight in the eyes yesterday and I said, I said, um, you might get to write a letter to dad. She's like, he's dead. You can still write a letter to dad. Mm -hmm. And, but yet she realized, but now she was 40 some years old that she realized that she's now at a place where she doesn't like how it's been going mm -hmm. and she's willing to try something new. Mm -hmm. And there's a vulnerability yes. in that, right? I, I heard a very powerful little statement earlier in a podcast mm -hmm. and it said, the more we feel, the more we can heal. So there it is again. Right? And that's, and what that, that you have to slow down yeah. to feel. Yeah. And Tony Robbins, who's one of my mentors, he says, you heal the boy, the man appears. You heal the little girl, and the woman appears. And, and a lot of people don't like to hear that. But to go back, and a lot of us have some, have some crazy sauce in our upbringings. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah, but you have to slow down enough to see what is, how does this feel? Mm -hmm. and, and not only how does it feel, how is it manifesting itself in my world? Yeah. And do I like that? Yeah. And the cool thing that I love, Marin, is if we don't like it, we can change. Yeah. So Richard Paul Evans, he wrote the Noel letters, a cute little Christmas story that mm -hmm. came out in 2020. He said to live in gratitude is to live in power. Mm -hmm. Right. We have so much control over the gratitude that we practice. That's so good. And to change our lives through that. Right. That is so good. Yeah. Well, I love that. Well, I tell you what, with that being said, um, there's some bombs that have been dropped today. And I thank you for being present. And, and, and for those that have listened to it, there's some, you're going to want to go back and listen to this a, a few times yes. along the way. Um, this, is, this is one of the foundations of what we do in this practice mm -hmm. is um, help people understand the things they have control over. Mm -hmm. And gratitude's one of them. So, um, Goodness, I love this. So you've got some tools. You've learned about the, the biochemistry of gratitude. Um, we are grateful. If you have found value in listening to this podcast, share it, like it. Um, we're actually even doing, we do a giveaway each week. So if you jump in and, and give us a five-star review for our podcast, we put you into a drawing for one of my favorite supplements. It's vitamin DV3. It's one of my favorite vitamin D products that we use. Our goal, we exist to give you guys the tools that you need to cut through the fluff of what's out there and get to the real meat and potatoes that we'd call it of getting people well. So we are grateful, Marin, I'm grateful to have you here. I'm grateful um, to be here. Yeah. And this was, this, this took some, this took some effort to get in front of the camera. Not everyone loves to be in front of a camera and, and Marin did yeah. a great job and we're grateful for you doing this because we know, by the way, one of my other mentors says you have to find something that's uncomfortable mm -hmm. uh, because that's how you grow. Mm -hmm. And, um, so we're grateful for that. So, um, what an amazing episode. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes. We have some great guests planned. And I am just grateful that we exist, that the Daily Dose of Dr. Greg exists to give you and your loved ones the tools that you deserve to truly live life on your terms. All right, guys, have a great day. Stay tuned for our next episode.